the fool I was speaking to today. And, you know, the only reason I even got in is for anyone who's out soul winning today and saw what happened and saw the, the, the altercation with me and some other man out soul winning today. The only reason I even got involved with that, it's not, he wasn't just some unbeliever. He claimed the name of Christ. He had a testimony of salvation. Okay? And he was saying it was through faith. He was saying a lot of the right things. So when you have someone claiming to be a Christian, claiming to, to you know, believe in the Bible and believe in Christ, and then they're going to come off and, and just be shameful in their acceptance and tolerance of sin, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them have it. I'm going to openly rebuke them. Amen. He calls it hate, but you know what? If that guy is a brother, that's love. He needs to be rebuked. When I was talking with him, I said, well, do you believe that the law of the Lord is perfect? Because that's what the Bible says. And he said, oh, yeah, the law of the Lord is perfect. And I said, well, what about Leviticus 20.13? Oh, well, that's Old Testament. That's the law of the Lord. Amen. Didn't you just say, you said you believe the law of the Lord is perfect. Uh, uh, uh. It's because people, one, aren't reading their Bibles. This isn't just about reading the Bible, but look, you better know, if you want to know what you believe, why don't you read the Bible to get what you believe? And turn off the, the television. Psalm 119, look at verse number 104. The Bible says, through thy precepts I get understanding. God's laws, God's precepts, God's word. That's who you get your understanding from. You don't need it from CNN. You don't need it from Fox News. You don't need it from any of these other outlets. Why don't you get your understanding from God's precepts? Therefore, see, when you do that, when you get the, your, your understanding through the precepts of the Lord, therefore, I hate every false way. Oh, you hate preacher. Yes, I hate every false way. Because I believe the Bible. Because I get my understanding from God's precepts. Why do you love it so much? Why do you love perversion? There's something wrong with you if you love perversion. There's something wrong with you if you love every false way. Why don't you try getting a proper view of sin and hate it? Despise it. You have nothing to do with it. Get it out. Look, I know that we're not perfect. I know that we're all sinners. And if, you know, here's what he tries to say. Well, what about gluttony? Don't you have anybody that's overweight? And you're, look, God didn't put the death penalty on being overweight. That's right. There's no, that's not perversion. Okay, they're not even close to being the same thing. But I'll tell you what, I do hate every false way. I do hate every sin. I hate the sin of gluttony. I hate the sin of adultery. I hate the sin of fornication. I hate the sin of stealing. I hate the sin of murder. I hate the sin of sodomy. I hate these sins, okay? And you ought to too. And we need to have the right viewpoint that we don't downplay it. We don't mock it. We hate it. I hate every false way. I hate the false prophets. I hate the heretics. I hate it. Romans 12, 9 says, let love be without dissimulation. Dissimulation means it's fake, right? You're faking it. You're, you're, you're kind of simulating love, right? Don't let your love be fake. Abhor that which is evil. So how do you not make your love fake? You hate what's evil. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. This is Bible. Psalm 97, verse 10, the Bible says, Ye that love the Lord... Hate evil. Hate it. Hate evil. Hate the sin. Hate the wickedness. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Psalm 101, verse 3. The Bible reads, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. The problem is, if you're not hating the wickedness, if you're not hating the sin, if you're not hating every false way, it's a lot easier for it to cling to you. Because you're going to be surrounded by it. It's out there. It's out in the world. It's being pushed through the airwaves. You are coming into contact with it all the time. So if you're not hating the wickedness and hating the evil, it's a lot more likely to stick to you. But if you have the mindset that says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes, then how can it cleave to you? How is it going to stick to you? 
But no, people like putting the perverts in Hollywood in front of their eyes. They like getting their entertainment that way. They like mocking at their sin or just not caring even about their sin and just say, well, I'm just going to have this wicked person entertain me. And then they end up, they grow to love that person so much, even though they're extremely wicked and wicked as hell, that they don't want to take away the, the fleshly carnal desire of, of, of their entertainment. So now they can't say anything about what's wicked, uh, as the Bible says that we ought to have, and, and hate that sin. And then their ways are going to cleave to them, and then they're going to find, oh, it's not that bad. Why? Because a person makes you laugh? Even though they're a pervert? Proverbs 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Yes. Yes, I am preaching hate this evening. You heard it right. Because, oh yeah, I'm preaching the Bible. If you didn't get the references, Proverbs 14, 9, Psalm 119, 104, Romans 12, 9. Yeah, that's New Testament, by the way, Romans 12, 9. Psalm 97, 10, Psalm 101, 3, Proverbs 8, 13. We're just getting started. This isn't a sermon about hate. This is just how we ought to view sin.